Hello everyone, welcome to part 4 of this series learning Windows PowerShell in our channel Triglotilsco. In this particular video we are going to talk about commandlet syntax. So in the previous videos we did find a way how to explore commands within PowerShell and also in the help system video we did see how the help system produces a lot of documentation and one of the interesting uh, things in that documentation is the syntax styles that you need to use with a specific commandlet and we did say that uh, it is uh, called as a parameter set so now in this video we are going to understand the parameter sets in detail and we also are going to understand what exactly is a parameter so if you take an example of a swiss army knife here the swiss army knife consists of various different knives within itself so if a particular knife is used you get one sort of an output and when i use a different knife i get a different sort of an output right similarly if you take uh, the swiss army knife uh, itself as a commandlet it has various different parameters various different parameters so the parameter that you are using with that particular commandlet decides the functionality or at least decides the output uh, that you get in return so so this is how basically a parameter actually works so you need to understand what are the different parameters that are available for you within the powershell syntax style for each and every commandlet so that you will be able to understand uh, what parameters to be used when you need a certain set of output on the console so let's get uh, a little deeper into the syntax styles of uh, the powershell uh, commandlets so if you see this example right here a particular syntax style any syntax style starts with the commandlet first so in this case get service is a commandlet i can say this is commandlet because it starts with a verb and it ends with a noun so anything that starts with a verb and ends with a noun is a commandlet in the powershell and then it is followed up with a dash name parameter i can say this is a parameter because it starts with a dash so anything that starts with a dash is called as parameter in this uh, powershell scripting language again uh, and then the followed up uh, value is bits which means it is the value for that parameter so now what i am getting as an output at this point is get service name bits so get service generally gets all the services which are uh, installed on my computer and then dash name parameter is filtering those results only to bits so the output i uh, get on the console is only for the bit service and uh, followed up parameter is required services parameter so if you see this required services parameter it doesn't accept any value on the right hand side which means this is called as a switch parameter a switch parameter by des design uh, does not take any input as a value the switch parameter is designed to perform certain set of actions and uh, those actions will be performed by every switch parameter so in this example dash required services when i use with this particular commandlet i get an output of the dependent services so i get the output of whatever the services which bits is dependent on so that's the output i'm going to get in the console so let's go ahead and see this example in real time to see how this actually works and uh, before that uh, let's uh, take an example again uh, get service right here is one parameter set i have another parameter set right here and then uh, i have a third parameter set so each and every parameter set is unique is unique uh, because at least it has one parameter that is unique uh, from the other set uh, the other syntax that we have so if you take the first parameter set right here i have the name parameter which is unique you cannot find name parameter anyway in the second or third parameter set if you take a look closely and then in the second parameter set display name is unique i cannot find display name in parameter set 1 parameter set 3 so i cannot find display name anywhere so that's what uh, it makes unique uh, this parameter set and the third uh, parameter set we have input object so input object is unique amongst uh, these two parameter set so you cannot find in input object anywhere in these two parameter sets 
so each and every parameter set will have at least one parameter unique which which is what uh, which is why we have multiple parameter sets within uh, one particular commandlet now if you take a look here this is a commandlet get service and dash name is a parameter dash name is a parameter so followed by a parameter we have something called a string this is the value so dash name accepts a value which is a string data type uh, data type is what uh, defines what kind of value is being passed to the next parameter so which means uh, in string it is a piece of text uh, for example if i take in uh, input object it takes something called a service controller object so we'll talk about what a service controller object is and then some parameters also take integers which is a uh, 0 to 9 so these are called data types data types so parameter takes strings values i mean like integers and then it it can also take objects it can also take objects so it depends on how the parameter uh, set is designed so let's go ahead and see a couple of quick examples in my lab environment so that you will be able to understand this in much broader context so suppose if i say get help get event log with a dash full parameter i'm going to get the full help now if i see here i have two parameter sets in this particular case this is the parameter set one this is the parameter set two i can say that these are two parameter sets because it starts with get event log it starts with get event log right here there is nothing else which is starting uh, with get event log so these are the two parameter sets i have the one and the two now if you see dash log name is a parameter which is unique and you cannot find dash log name anywhere in the second parameter set and again instance id is unique so i cannot find instance id in the second parameter set anywhere so why is this so important because you cannot mix and match between two parameter sets which means i can use get event log with dash log name dash instance id or dash after or dash as base object but i cannot use get event log with get event log dash log name and dash as string so i cannot combine these two parameter sets and execute on the powershell console it immediately throws me an error and if you take a look here in this parameter set i have dash computer name and this parameter set also has dash computer name so i can use dash computer name with as string dash list and common some of the common parameters which we'll be discussing uh, later and i can use computer name with dash log name dash instance id dash uh, after because dash computer name belongs to both parameter set so i can use i have no issues there but if if in case any parameter is unique to a parameter set you need to stick to those parameter sets so let's go ahead and uh, run a couple of examples and see how this actually works in action so if i run get service as we have seen in the presentation get service get me all the list of services on my computer now when i specify a parameter which means i'm using only one of the knives in the smiths army knife so i'm using just one knife which is dash name parameter so when i just hit enter i just get stopped bits background intelligent service which means i'm getting information only about this particular service i don't get anything else so now if i use another knife in my uh, uh, parameter which is required services for example now see the output i get the output which uh, actually the bit service is dependent on which means bit service is dependent on rpcss and event system so these are the two services which are required for the bit service to start so now if you see here when i use the dash name parameter i got a different set of output but again when i added something to the end of that particular command with dash required services as a parameter i get a different sort of output here i'm using one knife i'm using two knives in this particular example so the output differs so this is how parameter changes the behavior of a commandlet so I, I didn't really change anything for the command that I've executed. If you can take a look here, the command was same and the parameter I used in both the commands are same. But 
I, when I added an additional parameter, the behavior of the commandlet changed and I got a different output. Now, let's go ahead and go uh, see a different example, get event log for example, uh, and I want to see the help. So I get event log help and I want to see the full help. So I specify dash full parameter. So when I go ahead and see the syntax styles that I have, I have two parameter sets right here, get event log and then get event log with an asterisk. So there are two parameter sets right here. So if you see, there are a lot of parameters in the first parameter set. So log, dash log name, dash instance ID, dash as base object, dash username. So there are a lot of things uh, in the first parameter set. But if you take a look at the second parameter set, there are not much parameters. There is only one parameter which is unique, which is dash as string. So you cannot find dash as string in the first parameter set anywhere, right? So if I want to use as string, I need to use get event lock as string and dash compute name and then I can say dash list. So I cannot use dash log name with this particular syntax style. Again, I cannot use instance ID with this particular syntax style. So you need to stick any one of the parameter sets if you ever would like to work with the commandlets. So these are some of the basics that you need to understand before we go into any further uh, discussions about how the syntax styles and the parameters for the work. And if you scroll down, you can see a lot of different examples using which you can use this command. So I can use get event log dash list. So it provides me a list view of all the event logs. So let's go ahead and run that for example on a different console. So get event log dash list. So you can see that it provides me a list view of all the different types of events that has been generated in my Windows event log. And then I can also use get event log with the log name system and the entry type error, which means it is going to show me all the event logs which are uh, which has the state of error uh, from the log name, which is system, right? Let, let me just uh, copy that and then proceed with the GUI and then hit enter. You can see that there are a couple of event logs which are actually having the status error from my system event log. In Windows, there is something called as an event log which has application event logs, system event logs uh, and then uh, security logs. So there are a lot of things and a lot of information which is generated each and every time when an event happens. So from the system event log, I have uh, around six error event logs. So and I have the description and the message for that particular uh, event ID. Now, finally, uh, I just want to discuss uh, one thing uh, before we leave for this video. Uh, when I go ahead and say get help get event log or and then I specify the full parameter. I get a various sort of information. So there is a, a complete list of parameters uh, which are actually uh, uh, gives a detailed description about that parameter. So whatever the parameter which is listed in this parameter set, a detailed documentation is available for those parameters. So if you see computer name, it says specifies a remote computer. The default location is the local computer, which means when I use dash computer name parameter, Instead of using my local machine, I can connect to a remote machine and get the event logs. Again, instance ID gets only events with the specific instance ID, right? And then again, the log name specifies the event log, enter the log name value, which is uh, security or application or system, whatever the log name is. And the newest is going to accept something called as an integer value. So let me just demonstrate that. So for example, in the same uh, uh, case, if I want to get only the event logs from the system and I just don't want to see all the event logs, but I just want to see the newest 15. So when I hit enter, I just get the first 15 logs, the new 15 logs from my particular uh, system event log and they are sorted based on the timestamp. They're sorted based on the timestamp. So this is how some parameter accepts uh, integer values, some parameter accepts strings, and some parameters accept objects. So objects is something we haven't really discussed at 
this is a concept that needs uh, 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 some sort of discussion before we get there so I just want to give you an overview of this particular uh, syntax styles and set a context before we deal with objects so that's it for this video friends I hope this video is uh, 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 useful for you and if you really like the video please do like and share and subscribe to my channel and it will really encourage me to do more and more videos for you thank you and have a wonderful day